Hi guys, welcome back to Elevate English. Ever heard the phrase, first impressions last? Well, it's true for your essays too. Your introduction is your first impression, and it does last. It's the very first thing your examiner sees, and they make multiple judgments about the quality of your essay as they read it. This means it needs to be as perfect as you can make it. Ask any English teacher, and they'll tell you that they can generally predict the score of an essay just by reading the introduction. Why? Because it represents the rest of the essay, and it sets the whole thing up. So what I'm going to do today is walk you guys through a simple but extremely effective way to structure your intro. Before we jump into things though, you are going to need a few things as we work through this video. The first thing you're going to need is a copy of the sample Harry Potter essay. You should have received this in your introductory email to the series when you signed up at elevateeducation.com. If you don't have it on you, pause the video and go and get it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then make sure you've signed up for this series so you can get the welcome email with all of the resources that we're going to use throughout. Don't worry, I'll be right here waiting for you. Great, so you should now have a copy of the essay. Let's get straight into it. So how do we write an awesome introduction? In the very first sentence of the introduction, we want to aim to immediately hook the reader with the first few words. This can be done effectively with a quote or a broad statement about the topic or something controversial, but you don't necessarily need to state your exact point of view right off the bat. So let's have a look at the sample essay. I've opened with this line. It's easy to mistake talent and luck for heroism. The reason I opened with that line is because it clues the reader into my point of view without explicitly giving it away. It basically says, talent and luck don't make you a hero, but we often mistakenly associate them with heroism. This puts the reader in a position of curiosity. As a reader, I think to myself, have I mistaken luck and talent for heroism in my life? What is heroism then? Now that we have our first sentence on paper, it's time for sentence number two. In this sentence, we want to alert the reader to our main arguments, but it's got to be like a preview for a blockbuster film. We want to give them an interested, a thing to be interested in without giving the major plot points away. So let's take a look at the ch my chosen sentence. Being the chosen one, Harry is often regarded as the hero of the Harry Potter series. However, close inspection of the text reveals that this is not the case. The reason that I did this was essentially to explain the first sentence and clearly demonstrate that I don't think Harry is the true hero of the series. Once again, I haven't given too much away yet. That's for the next sentence. In sentence three, I say, JK Rowling's repeated use of chance encounters and focus on destiny show that luck, more than true sacrifice or heroism, is Harry's defining trait. This is where the meat of my contention is. I build upon the previous two sentences and explain exactly what, I've meet, what I mean. I say that it's luck, not sacrifice or heroism, that defines Harry. Here I've made it clear that he's just lucky and that true heroes are not the ones that are lucky. They require something more. In the following sentence, I've chosen that other characters show more courage than Harry and that they are more selfless than Harry, suggesting to the reader that it's these qualities that, in, that make a true hero. The why comes after, in your body paragraphs. A good way to think of this is, a, is in the upside down triangle thesis approach. What this triangle basically shows is that your introduction needs to start off general, addressing the topic as a whole, and become more and more specific to the question with each sentence. This is why we didn't start by saying, Harry isn't the true hero because he's lucky, and luck isn't what makes a hero. It's courage and selflessness and sacrifice. That'd be way too obvious and give everything away. It would also be too simple and get the marker on the wrong side. Instead, by starting general and saying that it's easy to mistake luck and talent for heroism, I raise an eyebrow and get the marker interested in what I have to say. Finally, you finish with a direct sentence that provides your answer to the question. Remember, the introduction should introduce the reader to the topic and give them the answer that you intend to prove using your body paragraphs. For more info on the structure of each part of your essay, make sure you have a look at the essay builder resource that should have been attached to that welcome email. The next thing I want to touch on is the specifics of intros and contentions. I can't make this clear enough. Be original and say what you really think. 
If you've properly engaged with the text that you're reading, you're allowed to be controversial. You're allowed to give opin opinions that go against what your teacher says or against what your class may think. In fact, you're allowed to say anything that you want, provided that you can back it up later in the essay. The good news is that if you follow the process I described last episode, you'll work out your plan really early and your arguments will come to you naturally. When you ask yourself, why do I think this? You'll very quickly determine whether your arguments are justified. If they are, roll on with your contention and say it as bluntly and unapologetically as you like. It's your essay. Own it. Also, feel free to be creative here. In the Harry Potter essay, we've gone for a very traditional written introduction because it's important to show you how to get the basics right, because that's what will get you marks. But you can be as unconventional as you like. Just make sure you tick all those boxes. For example, you could have the same essay introduction that could read, The Thunderbolt symbol has mythological roots, historically representative of divine power and godliness. The Thunderbolt has been Harry's mark since infancy. It is therefore natural to perceive Harry Potter as a hero. Yet, can someone really be born a hero? Rowling's Harry Potter reminds us that true heroes are in fact not the chosen ones, but rather the ones who choose themselves to become heroes. That is, though the series is named after him, Harry is merely a vehicle for Rowling to showcase her universe through inexperienced eyes. True heroes, such as Ron and Neville, are hidden in the folds of the story and are often overlooked, as they are in life. So for this episode, our action step is going to be to write up an introduction for the essay that you planned last episode, disagreeing with the question. Use the techniques we've gone over today and see how you go. Once you've written up that intro, join me for the next episode. Until then, this is Raoul and you're watching Elevate English.